Talk about an awesome weekend. We had one of the biggest weddings happen in the city of Lagos and we're absolutely still talking about it. But today on the news, I have a very special, highly energetic guest with me in the studio. My name is Biodun and you're welcome to another episode of Accelerate News. You heard about them, yep, the highly and insanely popular bobsled team of Nigeria that represented us in the Winter Olympics. I have with me Shewa Adigu, one third of the team. How are you doing, Shewa? I'm doing wonderful, thank you. Awesome, you are, she's radiating positive energy right now. Like, they are trying to make me move further away from her, but <laughs> I, can just, I can just lean in closer for the rest of this shot. How are you doing? Good, thank Tell you Tell me about much. your time in Nigeria so far. How's that been? Oh, it's been amazing. Honestly, it's like witch time. Because, <laughs> you know, coming back to Nigeria every gotcha. single time has been absolutely amazing. It's been an experience within itself. And yeah. so, um, this time around, it's even more exciting because, you know, we're coming bearing. And yes, and yes. I'm exciting. happy to. You guys did absolutely well. We all supported you. And you know what? We have high hopes for the future. So, but now let's just deep dive into your story into the Olympics. Now, it must have been really exciting exciting watching the Olympics as a child. Tell me about that experience and when did you find yourself falling in love with the Olympics? You know, to be honest, I was so much more of just like a basketball player growing yes. up that um, I didn't really get into that whole Olympic scene until 2004 games was when I watched it online um, uh, on TV. And when I saw the impact that people were receiving and the positive energy that Nigerians were getting yep. when they were watching themselves marching in and doing well in the games, I thought to myself, like, that is actually what I want to try to bring to Nigeria. So if I ever become a professional athlete, I want to represent Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And now it's my my inspiration to trying to go to track and field um, summer games in 2008 and I missed being able to go to that one Aww. but was able to go to 2012 games. Um, in so Hunter clearly Hurdle. you had like a very upbeat uh, childhood, you've always been sporty, you've always been engaged in sports. Oh yes, I'm the only girl out of three bo uh, with three boys, Ooh. so you can imagine <laughs> I got myself caught up in yeah, quite a bit you, of you uh, had some big shoes to feel. monkey <laughs> trouble. <laughs> Now tell me about growing up a Nigerian in the United States. You know, to be honest, it's more harped into us as Nigerian Americans gotcha. in the States to be proud to be Nigerian more so than I think than it is in Nigeria because it's just understood. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're away, there's the parents don't want to feel like you've been detached from the culture. Mm -hmm. And so it's even more pressure to make sure that you know your roots, you understand your culture, you know what it means to be Nigerian. So um, it was it was quite it was quite a culture shock to be honest, to yeah, be first generation. Um, how is your Yoruba right now? It has to be good, isn't it? Yeah, it's actually decent. Surprisingly, it kind of catches people off guard. I'm like, I understand everything you're saying. Everything. Uh, nice. Well, big shout out to your parents for making sure shout that that stuff, that stuff. So tell me about meeting uh, Akwama and Ungonzi. How did that happen? And uh, did you all get into the sport at the same time? Yeah, so um, honestly, I was the first one to kind of get into bobsled because I had friends that had gone from track and field to the sport. Once I got into the sport, I spent a year on the U.S. team, and that was when I learned that um, the sport was trying to grow. Mm -hmm. Nigeria was looking for their first Winter Olympians, and Africa as a continent had never been represented in the sports gotcha. of bob, women's bobsled or men's bobsled. So um, it then became something that I felt like was a, my walking purpose to try and make sure that I helped create that. And that was how I was able to um, speak with Ngozi and Akwama. Ngozi I had known actually as one of my former athletes that I coached at University of Houston. Gotcha. And then Akwama was introduced to me through a mutual friend when she just decided to up and move to Houston, Texas that year. So, yeah. All right. So qualifying for the Olympics, what did that feel like? Like, did you know, did you know that was going to happen? And the moment it happened, like, I'm sure a lot of things changed for you. How was that experience? Honestly, there was never a moment where it's like, okay, no, this is going to happen. Yeah. It was more so, this is the plan and this is our execution, gotcha. making sure that we hit different milestones and get to where we need to go on this path. Mm -hmm. And so there was never really that moment where we're like, okay, we are qualified for the Olympic yeah. Games. You know, yeah. we knew that there were things that we needed to do in order to qualify. And we knew that after completing a 5-3-2, because of the nature by which we were trying to qualify, yeah. 
we would essentially be hmm. guaranteed to go. <laughs> um, but we couldn't really make that yeah. be um, the, the, the point because obviously we wanted to be competitive. Sure. And so completing a 5-3-2 was just a breath of fresh air, sure. but it was more so, okay, now it's our ability to work and be competitive as possible once yeah. we get to the games. Nice. So now to the games itself, your team was just a couple of seconds behind the winning team. Did, did you feel like any pressure at that point? Because you had the whole world watching, like all of Nigeria had something to talk about for days and weeks and the entire month. How did you feel in that moment? Did you just tell me about that experience? Like, cause I can imagine having all of that weight on my shoulder and just wanting to make sure that I hit the mark and you know, make history for my country. How did you feel in that moment? In that moment, I think it was very surreal um, to know that we were at the games, we had the country, the continent on our backs, yeah. um, and it wasn't really considered more so pressure than it was considered um, just to finish out execution. Yeah. Because, I mean, if we're thinking about pressure, the pressure more so is getting to that point because yeah. it was, the bigger question was, are you guys gonna be able to get it done? Versus when you get there, how competitive will you be? Yeah. Because one thing that people don't understand about the sports of bobsled and skeleton is that time is the best teacher for each of those. Sure. And we just haven't had the same amount of time as mm -hmm. everyone else. True. So the key was to be as competitive as possible. And we were the most improved team there. I mean, despite being behind seconds from the first, sure. we were also seconds faster than sure, we were when we sure, first got there. Sure. So um, I think that it's a testament to show to what our dedication was and our strive to just being a better version of ourselves every day, as well as what we want to commit to being able to put towards future improvements. Yeah, and that speaks to a lot of youths out there, just the, the desire to want to be better and just outdo your previous performance. That speaks to a lot of that. Thank you very much. Um, so finally, not finally, because I have a ton of questions to ask you <laughs> as you can possibly imagine. The team is going through a transition now, um, Ngozi and Akoma are going to be leaving the team and you get two new team members. Um, can you give me some context to that and uh, what is going on generally? Well, to be honest, as far as leaving, I mean, I think that they are they haven't announced anything about, you know, being gone or anything like that. I think at the end of the day, the biggest thing that, as a federation that we've been doing is trying to grow. Sure. So there's never really been like, you know, any discussion about, you know, one or the other just leaving or anyone. It's more okay. so about the growth of the federation and how our participation will then either be the same or different. But the ultimate goal has always been the same about trying to increase the presence of um, bobsled and skeleton in the continent and country of Nigeria, awesome. encouraging other athletes to come in, which we've you know successfully been able to do, and then also just you know being able to promote the sport in whatever capacity that is, whether we are active athletes or just you know there um, in other roles, because everybody is actually still contributing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Now a huge question um, on everybody's minds right now is what happens between now and 2022 when you're going to get to compete in uh, the next round of Olympics. So what is going to happen between now and then, what level of engagement is going to happen between the team? Are we going to get as much buzz as we did the last time? So talk to me about that. You know, that's actually one of the most exciting reasons about, you know, even being here today is just yeah. the ability to help introduce and show all of Nigeria that there has been growth and we are continuously growing. We've got, you know, new athletes that have already started coming in. We've got April Young that's come in for Skeleton. We've got Linda Okoro, who's um, also come in with Bobsled. Uh, both uh, Linda has actually gone right now to go and finish participating in her driving school. And April, she's actually been driving Skeleton for three seasons already. So we are really excited about the future of the Federation, everything that we said we would do and what would like to continue to promote as um, a Federation that's been the cornerstone for all of Africa in both of those sports is to um, keep the momentum going, sure. keep the energy high, allow others to uh, reinvent themselves in their athletic form in these, you know, bobsled and skeleton athletes. Awesome. Like, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> now, just before we wrap up, you've now had to spend a lot of time in the country. Um, are there any campaigns that you think that you're quite passionate about that you want to either drive or be a part of just to instill some level of change? Absolutely. I think um, definitely in the sports world, just try one of the things that this federation was seeking to do in its inception was to try and give something new, a breath of fresh air to yeah. Nigeria, to the athletes, to the contingency of Nigerians all over the globe. And I think that we were successful in doing that yeah. in 
a different way. We came in differently. We sure. um, operated a bit differently than what it was and actually were able to highlight some of the positive areas and some of the driving forces by which Nigerians have been athletes for ages. Yeah. And so I think that that is something that we want to continue. That's part of the mission of what we what we stand for is just promoting you know excellence and sure. being able to, to stand for um, a federation of integrity and one that will always try and look out for the betterment of and, pro and progressiveness of our country. Very well said, very well said. Now, thank you so much for spending time with me today. No, no, no. It's been absolutely amazing. I mean, following all the media when you guys were doing your rounds, I'm just like, I'm going to get to talk to them too. Just watch out for me. <laughs> now, before we go, what is your favorite dance move in the country <laughs> right now? Because you got to keep it fresh. You got to show me something. I mean, oh it's the week. It's what? What? There's going to be a long weekend coming soon, and I need to be able to show some moves. So if you got any, oh, you want to show me you right now? Show me let's, something right let's, now. I'm let's like, get into it. What's your favorite dance move of the moment? I mean, I have a lot of favorite dance moves. Ooh. I like to dance. That's like my thing. Okay. You know? okay, so okay I, so. I, I'm gonna just piggyback off of what you think. You know, as Nigerians going into the biggest weekend coming up, as you mentioned, <laughs> should be able to hold down because yeah. I just need to be able to know that I'm keeping up with what's yeah, happening. Yeah, so <laughs> that makes so much sense. You know what? Let's not do it on camera. <laughs> Let's not do it on camera. I mean, you just went. <laughs> no, 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 no. We're going to save it. We're going to save it for behind the camera. Thank you so much for spending time with me. Uh, a huge shout out to you and your team and everybody who's going to join your team. Yeah, guys, it's been a fun time speaking to Shema Atigo on Accelerate News. My name, once again, is Biodon. Make sure you stay tuned to Accelerate and stay locked on our website for all the awesome content coming your way this week. Have an awesome week, everybody. Stay awesome.